This is a Nissan E NV200 Combi. The Tecna spec, this is a 26,000 pound electric car. And I've been driving it pretty hard this week, which is why it's covered in all kinds of muck and mud. In just a week, we've taken it all the way to Devon and back from here in beautiful mid Wales. And it's been used as a gig vehicle to transport uh, band members and their equipment to a gig which involved going down a farm track, which is why it's quite dirty. We've pushed it really hard. We've done over 500 miles in a week, which only a few years ago would have been impossible in an electric vehicle. What's it actually like to drive? As you can see in here, it's all pretty normal and modern, the buttons on the steering wheel. This is how we control it. Press that button, that wakes up the vehicle. See the battery is currently at 55%, we've got 47 miles, unless I turn the heater on, which takes it to 44. And that's something you're quite likely to do this time of year, because it's very cold, it's November. I like to test electric vehicles in November, it's very hard on them because you have to use the heating all the time. But we have luxuries. Heated seats, heated steering wheel. That helps, it's better to try and heat the human than to heat the air. The only problem is we found we were having to use the air conditioning a lot to stop it misting up. And that really does sap the battery life. From, from a full charge it probably takes about 10 miles off the range, which is not good news. Right, so this is what it's like to drive. Put it into B mode, conventional handbrake, off it goes. And that's it, we're away. The strangest feeling is driving one of these around town, because every time you stop, It just all goes quiet. This car is joyous to drive in traffic. The reason we took it to Devon was very simple. There is now a rapid charging infrastructure in place. Does that actually mean that the electric car is practical? The truth is, no it doesn't. What it actually did was turn a three hour journey into a six hour one. We found we were driving for an hour at 50, 55 miles an hour, which is frustrating in itself. But then you're having to spend half an hour charging up. So it's good that you can charge in just half an hour. But if you're having to do so every hour, it makes journeys tedious. So being an electric motor, it, it can be quite brisk. Obviously that eats into your battery life. You find the throttle's actually got a little thing you've got to push through if you really want to get all the power and that's really good because it, it's like having a fake bottom so to speak on the travel so it forces you to drive more economically similarly taking it out of eco mode makes it feel more sprightly but reduces your range and realistically we found the furthest we drove between charges was 61 miles on very tricky welsh terrain lots of hills, lots of heater use, and we really did only just make it back home. It wasn't quite going into turtle mode, which is when it goes into a full-on limp and says, pull over because the battery is now going to die, but we were below 7% of battery life remaining. It was quite nervous. I was having to do things like go up hills at 20 miles an hour. That's just not really enjoyable. You start to feel a bit dangerous because you're on a 60 mile an hour road people aren't expecting cars to be going that slowly and that's it in at times it, the electric car still does feel like a massive compromise on the plus side all that charging to get down to Devon was free because that's the way it currently is it won't stay that way forever I suspect and it's also very quiet just set the cruise to 55 and just whisper along at motorway speeds. We're doing 50 at the moment and you actually start to notice just how much wind and road noise there is. 
It's not as accomplished as the Leaf. It uses the same engine and battery pack, but this is a bigger, more practical vehicle. And some of the details, like the sliding doors, that's very good. People in the back seem to find it comfortable, but the ride is a bit bouncy because it's got an over 700 kilogram payload. They have to make sure it can handle that. The suspension is a bit firm. We have tested it with a couple of hundred kilograms of wood in the back and that did improve the ride a bit. We also managed to fit a big builder's sack of wood behind the rear seats. We didn't have to fold them. It's a different way of driving though. You find yourself driving very smoothly. You try to brake as little as possible. And in this B mode, there's very strong engine braking you're recharging the batteries but it also means you haven't got that out of control feel that some automatics would tend to have. I find actually I'm touching the brake pedal very little indeed. We come to a bend I'm just easing off and the car is recharging its batteries and that drag through the motor just makes it feel like engine braking. The first little bit of pressure on the brake pedal boosts that regenerative braking further and then finally the hydraulic brakes actually kick in. Very powerful they are as well. We're now driving slowly behind the tourist and as we discovered on the long trip getting stuck behind tourists saves battery life. In fact the biggest problem we had when we were doing the long trip was feet. It's all well and good having a heated steering wheel and heated seats, but our feet were always really cold. We really struggled to get the climate control to work in a way that actually provided warmth to the feet. For some reason it kept on blowing cold. Just immensely frustrating. So some people are really, really zealous about the, um, the EV, the electric vehicle. They think it is the future, it's brilliant. And they go on, oh, well, you know, you can't just drive it like a normal car, you've got to do this and that. I don't like that. I found I was cruising down the motorway at speeds I didn't like doing. I don't like doing 55, 60, because you're starting to get in the way of the trucks. You know, they're just trying to do a job. I'd rather be able to travel a little bit quicker. And then you meet people who go, oh, well, what you need to do is slipstream the trucks and that extend your range. I'm not going to go slipstream in trucks, that's incredibly dangerous. Here's a quick tip for you if you're driving an electric vehicle. If you're in hilly terrain, don't use the cruise control and don't try and keep your speed up. If you hit the start of a hill at 60, don't try and keep it at 60 all the way up. It's amazing how much more economical it is if you just let it slow down as my own 2CV would because it just hasn't got any power. This isn't a vehicle without fault. For a start, look at this rear wiper. It doesn't clear all of that part of the rear window. It seems to do a better job of cleaning the passenger side. That's pretty poor for a car that was apparently designed by the Japanese who drive on the same side of the road as we do. Do they not want this bit cleared? Annoying. Secondly, well it's great to have this enormous boot and there's a parcel shelf that can be easily removed and tilted out of the way and the seats also fold down but I mean it is cavernous in there but this is a problem. There is nowhere for the charge cables to be stored in the vehicle so they just fly around the back as you're driving because this carpet is really smooth and offers no grip whatsoever. Would it have been that hard to just have a little hook somewhere where you could hook the bags? You get two charge cables with these higher spec ones and you just think that's a bit of an oversight. Some people might also grumble about all the exposed metal. I mean it is very much a van with seats and windows. Not a problem for me, I'm willing to accept that, it's hugely practical that's kind of what it is. Why should it pretend to be anything else? But some might not like it. Under the bonnet, you find something that looks more like an engine than what you find under the bonnet of most modern cars. It's a bit unusual. So 
something like 80 kilowatts from that power plant through a single speed gearbox. So that is my review of the Nissan ENV200. A very practical and very usable electric car, if not ideal in all circumstances. Distance, still a bit of an issue, and range anxiety is very much still there. But if you're doing fairly low mileage, especially around town, then this is a hugely practical electric vehicle, and one you should definitely take a look at. See you next time. Thank you.